Hello viewers, here in front of you H.M. Kalita, Senior Faculty Member of Ecolibbo Residential IS Coaching Academy, Guwahati. Today, we are going to discuss a topic related to Assam history. A very important topic, that is the social history of Assam. While discussing the social history of Assam, we may come across some topic related to Assamese people. We may come across the definition of Assamese people. But our motive is not to define or we don't want to give the definition of Assamese people. But from the historical point of view, we may come across the definition of Assamese people. Let us start the topic. First thing first, we are going to start the social history of Assam. The history of the social life of Assam is a change. It is always a change and in truth. The social life of Assam in historical perspective is always in change and in truth. This change in truth while studying we have to divide we have to segregate complete historical period into three parts namely early period till 12th century the medieval period till 18th century and the modern period till the present day. While I attempt to talk about the social life of Assam, while I attempt to talk of the social history, I must put the changed historical map of the land under scrutiny and also comprehensive picture of the social life of the people of the land. The social history is also the history of human civilization and culture. With the historical change of a map of a land, the history of its political rise and fall, as well as the changes brought about by the nature also get related. Such changes also interfere the civilization and culture of the society. So natural history and geopolitical history form integral part of the social history. While discussing the social history, the four dynasties, history of those four dynasties normally come in front of us. The history of those four dynasties we are not going to discuss in detail, just we will start to say one by one of those dynasties. Those four dynasties are Naraka Bhoma, Burman dynasty, Salastamba dynasty, and the Pala dynasty. These four dynasties ruled over this ancient kingdom of Prakjurispura by the side of the Bronto and its tributary and surrounded by the hills and mountains from 1st century to 12th century. We are going to discuss this 1st to 12th century in this early period because those four dynasties proves that they inherited a rich language and culture. In between, you may ask me who was the earliest known king of Assam. The earliest known king of ancient Assam was a non-Aryan king named 
महिरंगा दानव कैपिटल एट महिरंगा इन द हिल कॉल मोइरंग पर्वत सेवेन माइल्स फ्रॉम प्रेजेंट गुवाहाटी ऑन जी एस रोड दैट मीन्स महिरंगा दानव वॉज द आर्लिएस्ट नोन नॉन आरियन किंग बट ही वॉज ए महिरंगा दानव वॉज ए किराटा चीफ वॉट इज किराटा दैट विल कम टू नो इन लेटर स्टेजेस एंड महिरंगा दानव वॉज फॉलोड बाय योर घटाक्षुरा योर नरका योर भगदत्त so we are not going to discuss all those dynasties just i quote their names now we are coming to social history of assam assam is a miniature india in that it show the migration of all the principal human races since very ancient times in different waves and period of history the negritos the austroasiatic the dravidian the mongoloid the alpines the aryans all emigrated to this land in different time and out of their mutual interfusion and out of their mutual interfusion their form the assamese culture they are form the assamese society while discussing those human society normally comes to in our mind that how anthropologists divide the human society anthropologists have divided human society into four groups Caucasus, C A U C A W S U S, Caucasus or Nordic, Mongoloid, Negritos, and the uh, Australoids. Those Australoids are also called the Nisat. But the question is in front of us: Who among those human society, which of them? the first society that came to our land the latest research have proved that among those four groups astrolias most likely are the original habitat among them because the skeletons found in different sites prove this claim now we'll discuss those human society their migration in our state our land that is assam that is kamrupa that is prakritishwar the exact date of this migration cannot be definitely ascertained the exact date of migration of this human society cannot be definitely ascertain but it is generally held that tibeto burmans burmans of indo chinese stock came to this land around 2000 bc onwards those tibeto burmans of indo chinese stock came to this land from 2000 bc onwards and the negritos and the austroasiatic preceded them by 2 to 3 millennium that means those negritos and austroasiatic came to this land around 4000 to 5000 bc the dravidian possibly preceded the tibeto burmans and last came the aryans according to some assamese scholar a wave of alpine forces also came to assam before the aryans and they hold that narakapura bhagadatta 
the priestic ruler of ancient Assam were Alpines in origin. Even the caste Assamese community, that is Kalitas of Assam, are also said to be Alpine origin. Now we have come to know that Negritos, the Austroasiatic, came to this land around 4000 to 5000 BC. They are followed by Dravidian around 2600 to 2500 BC and we have seen those Harappan civilization. Then came the Tibeto Burmans of Indo Chinese stock that is Kirata, that is those Mongoloid came to this land around 2000 BC and they are followed by Alpines and last came the Aryans. The Aryans most probably have come to this land in the later Vedic period that is 1000 to 600 BC. The asteroids were dark skinned of small height, flat nosed, long head, thick moustache, red eyes and their hair of copper color. The Nisad as described in Bhagavad Puran are of asteroids ethnic stock. The asteroids are normally asterisk speaking people are there. What I want to say that Astroloids were asterisk speaking people and linguistically they got divided. Those astroloids were linguistically divided into Astroasiatic and Astronesia. The Khasi Sinteng, the Khasi Jointia, speaking the Mon Kham, M O N K H M E R. Monkham speech are considered as representative of Austroasiatic. The Khasi Sinte are considered to be the representative of Austroasiatic and their original habitat was from Southern Asia or Indian Archipelago. Indian archipelago. Besides the Khasi Sinteng, other tribes of Austroasiatic stocks may come to this place from Pacific area, perhaps from the Philippines. It was the Austroasiatic who brought the culture of cattle rearing, terrace cultivation, erection of megaliths and head hunting. That means those cattle rearing activity, those terrace cultivation, those erection of megaliths and those culture of cattle rearing were brought to this land by the Austroasiatic. Assam along with Shotanagpur considered to be the last home of Austroasiatic in India. These people first dwelt in the Bromto Valley but being pushed by the Mongoloid Tibeto Burmese and they migrated to themselves to the hills. Survival of this Austroasiatic are also found among the Angaminagas, among the Kanyak among the Sang. Among the ethnic groups of Assam, one notes the prevalence of long head and white flat nose. Among the ethnic groups of Assam, one notes the prevalence of long head and 
white flat nose. From this one can surmise that Asterix had lived in Assam in ancient times. Dr. Suniti Kumar Chattopadhyay had pointed to the existence of Asterix in Assam before Mongolite. Even Dr. Bhuvan Mohan Das, after the study of Garus, Ravas, Kacharis of Assam have found in them parts of the features of non-Mongoloid races. He found astroleogenetic feature in the ethnic groups residing in the Assam and North Bengal and parts of Nepal. In present day, tea garden laborers of Assam, particularly among the coal, Munda, Gon, Ho, and such other groups, astric features can be clearly observed. Whatever may be the region, anthropologist study and evidence found till now have established that astric are the most ancient ethnic groups of Assam. Now we are coming to Dravidian and Negritus. We have talked about astroloids, those astroloids speaking astric people who got divided into Astroasiatic and Astronesia. So now we are coming to Dravidian and Negritus. Scholars have shown that after the Astric, scholars have shown that after the Astrix, Dravidian and the Negritus had seen their existence in India. Goha, Hutton, and some other scholars placed Dravidian as the first inhabitant of India. Whereas scholars like R. D. Banerjee gives this place of honor to the Negritos. In Assam, we don't find Negritos features, but in some parts of Nagaland, the group of Negritos, Negro, Negritos features have been noted by the anthropologist. After the astrologs, the ones coming from the Mediterranean Sea are the ancestors of Dravidian. These people built up an ancient civilization in India before the Aryans. The features of Mediterranean, that is, the ancestors of Dravidian had long head, long face, nose not so pointed and neither flat, medium height, black hair and yellow skins. These are the characteristics, features of ancestors of the group lived towards the east of Mediterranean. This ethnic group might have migrated to Assam after the Astrix. According to Kanaklal Bodhwa, Prakshutishpura was the kingdom of people coming from Mediterranean Sea. This Mediterranean were defeated by the Mongoloid and later king of Bidiha of Indo-Dravidian sources helped King Naraka to regain his kingdom. The king of Bidiha is said to have brought up Naraka and this relates to Naraka's origin to Indo-Dravidian ethnicity. The 
Banias, the Coibotras of Assam, are said to be Dravidian stock. But the early Dravidian stock got mixed with the early Indo Chinese people that as a result of this interfusion. Those Dravidian mix up with the Indo Chinese stock and as a result of their fusion, of their interfusion, a new type called the Mongolo Dravidian originated. That means Mongolo Dravidian originated from the synthesis of the interfusion of Dravidian and Indo Chinese stock. Some of the social and customs, some of the social rights and custom still prevalent among the Assamese society such as the indispensable use of turmeric in wedding ceremony considered to be the characteristics of Dravidian origin. We have talked about astrologists, we have talked about the Dravidian, we have talked about the Natritus. Now we are coming to talk about the Mongoloid ethnic group which is one of the most and dominant group found in the Assamese population. Assam is the main gateway to India through which the Mongoloid, Indo-Chinese, tibeto Burmese made their way as observed by S.K. Chitraji, Assam has thus to meet the tribal movement. Assam has thus to meet the tribal movement from the east involving the advent of Tibeto Chinese speaking Mongoloid and it was in Assam primarily. This great element for helps in the formation of Assamese people and they become Indianized particularly in the Bromto Valley. Assam thus helped very much. Assam thus helped very largely in the absorption of these Kirata elements in the formation of Hindu people. This can be looked upon the Assam's great contribution to the synthesis of culture and fusion of different races that took place in India. A synthesis which had started in prehistoric time and that helps the formation of Assamese society. The Mongoloid features are commonly evident in the population of Assam and those Mongoloid have come to this place to the northeast and that points to the large influx of Mongoloid into this area. The original home of this Mongoloid people was the upper course of the Yangtze, Y-A-N-G-T-S-E, Yangtze, Kiang and Huanghu in the northwest China. Probably from 2000 BC onwards, swarms of people from this area began to emigrate towards Assam and Burma. And later on, they got settled in plains and rivers valley of these two countries. They entered Assam following the courses of Brahmaputra, Sindhuin, Saluin, Mekong and Manam and the mountain passes of Assam. Whereas another group entered through the courses of Tista, Dhalua, sorry, Dharla or the Sankus to the North Bengal. Some of them traveled to Nepal and rest occupied the hills of Assam 
and gradually spread over the whole of Bronto Valley, driving the speakers of Monkham speech, the Khasi Jayantia, to the different direction. Today, all the hill tribes in the region, today, the hill tribes in this region, surrounded by present Assam, with exception to Khasi Sintang, and most of the tribes and communities of the Brown Valley, like Koches, Kacharis, Moran, Sutia, Borahi, Raba, Mes, Lalung, Hajung, all are the Indo Chinese Tibeto Burman origin. These people are loosely called Mongoloid, though nowadays the term Indo Mongoloid is preferred and literally they are called the Kiratas. There was a constant flow of Tibeto Burmans of the Indo Chinese stock to Assam through the mountain passes of the southeast. Then came Ahom. Ahom came around 1215 and they entered Bhamto Valley in 1228 and then they established their capital at Soraydeo 1253 where Ahom were the members of the Sun branch of the Great Thai or the Thai families of Southeast Asia. The Khamtis, the Fakyals, the Aitonias, the Tulung, the Shyam, the Khamjong, all are Thai Sun family. Mainly they have come to Assam at different times and settled mainly in the stern Assam. So we talked about those clans, those ethnic tribes that came to Assam in different times. Now we are going to talk about the last one that is the Aryan. The Aryans were the last to migrate to Assam. They probably entered the Bronto Valley in the later Vedic period, that is 1000 to 600, 500 BC. Under the all-embracing Hindu culture, under the all-embracing Hindu culture, the Mongolo Dravidian of the Bronto Valley were largely Aryanized and entered into the Hindu fold. Beginning at least with the 6th century AD, it became the systematic policy of rulers of ancient Assam to create Agrahara, to create Agrahara settlement for the Brahmans and this policy was largely responsible for the settlement of Brahmins and other high-class Aryans in this land. To know about the identity of Assamese people. In order to know the identity of Assamese people, we tried to trace the history of main ethnic group in Assam. We have also come to know that different branches of main ethnic groups coming to Assam at different periods passed through a process of synthesis towards forming a limited social life of ancient Assam. And this synthesis took place in blood, in culture, in language. To sum up, to put in nutshell, from Tibeto Burmese branch of the Mongoloid in Assam, from the Tibeto Burmese branch of the Mongoloid in Assam, emerged the Bodo group, though 
Now, even those original autochthonous Boru group has got subdivided into linguistically separate groups such as Garu, Tiwa, Rava, Sutia, Koch, Kasari, Dimasa, Karbi. That means the autochthonous Boru group got divided into separate linguistic groups such as Karus, Tiwas, Ravas, Sutias, Koch, Kachari, Dimasa, and Karbi. And from Thai Chinese branch of the Mongoloid section emerged the communities like Thai Khamti, Thai Fake, Thai Siam, Thai Turu, Thai Aiton, and Thai Ahom. So, Assamese population has been enriched. Again, I am telling, so the Assamese people has been enriched by the broad conglomeration of Bodo group of people which was an offshoot of Assam, Burma branch of the Mongoloid ethnic stream and, uh, and also by the people of Thai Chinese branch of Mongoloid ethnic stream. Again, I am repeating this one. We have talked about and we have traces all the ethnic groups. The Assamese population has been enriched by the broad conglomeration of Bodo group of people which was an offshoot of Assam, Assam branch of that is Assam Burma branch of the Mongoloid and also by the people of Thai Chinese branch of Mongoloid ethnic state. What we understand by the Assamese people today. What we understand by the Assamese people today is a composite picture of Astrik, Aryans, Dravidian and Mongoloid people. The Assamese people today is a composite picture of Astrik, Aryan, Dravidian and Mongoloid people. This picture has emerged through a course of thousands of years of history. So, who are the Assamese people? Can we define Assamese people by discussing all those social history of Assam? Yes. One, Dr. Torun Sondra Hormadebe, he has defined Assamese in his works. According to him, the autochthonous Bodo race, together with the Astric elements and the Ahoms, the autochthonous Bodo race, together with the Astric elements and the Ahoms, were finally welded with Aryan Hindu settler of the valley into a single people, the Ahomia or the Assamese people. So, Dr. Torun Sandra Horma, he has given the definition of Assamese people. According to him, the autochthonous Bodo race, together with the Astric elements and the Ahoms, where that means autochthonous Bodo race, together with Astric elements and Ahom, were finally welded with Aryan Hindu settlers of the valley into a single people that is Okhomia, that is the Assamese people. This picture has emerged through the course of thousands of years of history. This writing, this discussion has clearly shown that the Mongoloid group of people forms a dominant part in the Assamese population. Those Mongoloid people forms the dominant part of the Assamese population. Even in the Yogini Tantra, also it has been said that Kirata influence is immensely found here 
which points to the influence of Kirata features among the Assamese population. So we have discussed about the ethnic indigenous groups, the aboriginal groups, the autochthonous group that migrated to Assam. Now we are going to discuss the medieval part that is up to 18th century after 12th century century up to 18th century. The 13th and the 15th century are significant milestone in the social history of Assam. The 13th and 15th century are the significant milestone in the social history of Assam. In the 13th century, Sukapha came to Assam and in the 15th century, so the birth of Sri Hankarya. With the coming of Sukapha, the Middle Ages began in Assam. So, with the coming of Sukapha, the Middle Ages began in Assam. Moreover, the name with which this state and its people come to be known may have taken part during this 13th century itself. What I want to say that the name of this state and the name of the people known may have taken that part have taken during this 13th century itself. Dr. Sattupadhyay, in his book Kirata Janokriti, while discussing the coming of the Ahoms to Assam, he said, they were the Assams, they were the Ahoms, they were the Ahoms, the people who gave their name to the province. In Dr. Bani Kanto Kakoti Memorial Lecture, Dr. Yo Chotupadai. In the Bani Kanto Kakoti Memorial Lecture, Chotupadai mentioned that the word Ahum became Assam as the word was pronounced that way by the old resident of Assam. <coughs> Even Dr. Kakoti suggested the word Asama, that means peerless, <coughs> maybe later Sanskritization of an earlier form Asama. Dr. Kakoti, Dr. Bani Kanto Kakoti suggested the word Asama, that means peerless, maybe later Sanskritization of earlier form of Asam, A C H A M. That is the Asama. Assam has become Asama in Tai Sham. C H M. Sam means to be defeated. With the prefix A, Assam would mean undefeated. The name of this place, Assam, according to Kakoti, derived from the Thai word Sam. C H M. Sam means defeated. With a pre pre prefix A, Assam would mean undefeated. In the first days, the word Assam Ahom referred to a particular community. In the Dorong Raz Bangsawali, written in the 16th, 17th century, and in the Kotha Gurusarit, the word has been referred to in this same sense. So, the use of the name Assam to denote a country and uh, to refer the people as Akhomia is not very old. This name was given by the Ahum in their 13th century. We have talked about the coming of Ahum and how the name Assam and the, how the name Akhomia came into place we got it in the 13th century from the Ahom dynasty. 
In the meantime, we are going to discuss the coming of Muslims, the coming of Gorias, coming of Moriyas to this land. In the meantime, those who came as a part of the Mughal forces, the Muslim came as an invader, Muslim came as a Mughal forces. In the meantime, those came as a part of Mughal force, those Mughal soldiers, a section of them settled in Assam and became the part and parcel of Assamese society during the Ahum period of Assam history. The first, the first Mohammedan horde to enter Kamrupa consisted of Turks led by Bakhtiar Khilji in 1205 AD and the incursion ended in a disaster. As a result, those soldiers settled in Assam and they became the part and parcel of the Assamese society. They were followed by a persistent effort on the part of the Muslim rulers of Bengal Turks. The Muslim in Assam are generally known as Goryas, a term originating from the name of the kingdom of Ghor to which Muhammad, the founder of the Muslim empire in India belonged. There is another section of Muslim called the Moriyas. The other section of the Assamese Muslim that is Moriyas, the descendant of the war prisoners of Turbuk's army. Living aside all those Goryas, Moriyas, there are Soyots, there are Mughals, there are Pathans who became a part of the Assamese society. And also then came the Ajan Fakir, that is Ajan Pir Hajarat Sah Miran, who came in 17th century all the way from Baghdad and settled at Sipsagar. Now we have talked about those indigenous Goryas and Moriyas. Now we are coming to talk about those of Brahmins and Kaista. Ahum and Koch kings brought in from outside new families of Brahmins and Kaistas and other people following different professions and they were put in the position of their according to their proficiency, according to their, their custom, they, according to their what they preached. That means Brahmins, Kayastos, those who are brought from outside, they have got different profession and place them in position of responsibility. The Assamese Brahmin originally came from Mithila, Orisha, Benaras and Kanoos. We are not going to discuss more about those communities. Now we are coming to the last part that is modern part of our social history. The modern part of social history starts from the signing of Yandabu Treaty, Yandabu Hondi in 1826 and till 1947 we are going to discuss those last part. The most significant part is this one because after the coming of British, the demography of the land of Assam had a tremendous change because, because of British traders, lot of many numbers of migrated people from the East Pakistan came to Assam. The most significant impact on the demographic situation was made by the discovery of tea bushes in Upper Assam in 1920s. Tea was 
discovered in Upper Assam in 1920s and exactly at a time when British traders were denied Chinese tea and by 1837 Assam Tea Company was established. Once tea was established by 1835 Britishers have seriously organized plantation of tea and each year they brought swamps of labor from Chotanagpur, from Odisha, from Andhra Pradesh and they are brought to the state for the plantation of tea. Those laborers too on the expiry of their service tenure started settling around the gardens. Another important event was the migration of Marwari businessmen in the wake of states changeover from subsistent barter economy to money economy that followed the annexation of Marwari community. This development was convincingly reflected in the first ever census of 1872 which recorded a total population of 20 lakhs as compared to population of Assam at 1826 only 8 lakhs. In 1826, the population of Assam was 8 lakhs and in 1872, that is in the first census, it was recorded that the population became 21 lakhs. This 21 lakhs included besides indigenous Assamese population a substantial number of people speaking Bengali, Nepali, Rajasthani and Central Indian tribal dialects those came as a labor of tea plantation. But the state's demographic structure was to undergo a still more significant change in the wake of discovery of petroleum product and the construction of railway lines in Assam and it so the influx of outsider from other state to our state especially from the Bengal lot of migration took place after the discovery of petroleum that is 1880s 80s 90s and the construction of railways in 1880s once this migration started there was no end to it even as of today it was during this period that the zamindars of gualpara also sponsored unofficial and limited migration of pigeons from the eastern part of bengal to their first low-lying areas in order to ensure and enhance their revenue income. Once the process started, there was practically no end to it. The pigeons from Eastern Bengal, 90% of them Muslim started moving into this state in an endless strip. By speech, they are Bengali, though by religion, they are Muslim but they are distinguished by their customs, by their habit from the indigenous Muslim of those Goryas and Moriyas of our province. Yet their number grew alarmingly as on today itself. Thus it was only 45,000 indigenous Muslim in 1891. In 1891, the population of Muslim in Assam was only 45,000, which swelled to 1,18,000 in the district of Gualpara alone in just two decades. That means population of Muslim in Assam was only 45,000, which grew to 1,18,000 in the district of Gualpara alone in just two decades. In Borpeta, Subdivision, the population of Muslim stood up 
from 0.1% in 1911 to 49% in 1941. The number of immigrants in the Kamloop district as a whole rose from 44,000 in 1921 to 1,34,000 in 1931, that is just in one decade. Even you can see the population of Muslim population increased in Moja or Borpeta subdivision that increases in the alarmingly. While the Pup and Pasim Somaria Mojas of Guwahati subdivision registered an increase by 140 to 168 percentage of Muslim population in those two Pub and Pasim Samaria. Likewise, in the district of Nogaon, Nogaon the five Mojas like Laukwa, Ding, Bokoni, Lahorikat, Juria recorded an increase of Muslim population from 100 to 300 percent. In the census report beginning from 1901, those who returned Bengali as their mother tongue far outnumbered the Assamese speaking population. Looking at those report, those results, the then census commissioner of 1900 left observed that if immigration at this rate was allowed to go, there was the possibility of a major change in the future of Assam. It was told by then Census Commissioner in 1901. Then came Sar Sayyid Muhammad Sadullah as the first Chief Minister of Assam, a non Congress coalition ministry that formed in 1st April 1937. Sadullah did emerge again as the chief minister in 17 November 1939 and his government took advantage of his position and announced land development scheme in 1941. The so modified scheme helped greater relaxation of the line system. He was to open particular areas for settlement of particular immigrants. Then we are coming to the last part that is 1921 to 1947. From 1921 to 1945 the migration was at times even encouraged by the and it was patronized. This migration was patronized by the then provincial government. The tacit politically motivated patronage of the League Ministry headed by Sir Sayyid Muhammad Sadullah was always there that helps in patronizing those immigrant Muslims from East Bengal. And the partition of the country a few years later, that is in 1947 when the party took place, great exodus of Hindu refugees are also along with that. Some Muslim came from the East Pakistan. This was in addition to the immigration of the Nepalese and interstate movement from rest of the country. So, if you see the census of starting from 1826 till 200, 2011, the last census what was conducted. In 1826, 8 lakh was the population. 1872, in the first ever your census shows that the population was 21 lakhs. 1901, the population was 32 lakhs. 1941 population grew to 67 lakhs. The most important noticeable period is 1941 to 1971. That 1941 the population was 67 lakhs, whereas in 1971 the population grew to 146. That is within 30 years population grew to double. 
what it was 67 lakhs it grew to 146 lakhs 1991 the population was 224 lakh out of those 224 lakhs and now we are coming to the last census that is population of Assam was 312 lakhs that is 31.2 million that is 3.12 crores. Now question is who is an Assamese? Who will define Assamese people? Will it be possible to define from the social history of Assam or it will be the definition will be given by the expert committee that is committee constituted by the central home minister or the definition of Assamese will be given by the intellectuals by the people of Assam. One definition given by Dr. Muhammad Tahir. According to him, who is an Assamese? The basic tenet, the basic tenet of the Assamese society is that anybody who accepts and imbibes the cherished ideals of unity that pervades the Assamese society is an Assamese. Whatever be his caste or creed or language or land of origin or his economic background. So, is it necessary, is it possible to define Assamese based on 1951 as cut-off year? Fine, one can define Assamese based on 1951 census report, but unless one accept, unless one adopt the Assamese culture, Assamese language, Assamese tradition, can anybody call him a Assamese? Now question is in front of you, who is an Assamese? You have to decide by yourself. Thank you.